The Chicago Cultural Center is a national landmark building located on 78 East Washington Street. It occupies a full block between Michigan Avenue and Garland Street, bridging the scenic Millennium Park and wall of concrete skyscrapers. Currently, it serves as a hub of cultural events, housing over 450 shows and exhibitions per year. However, very few people know that when the building was first built, when there was no computers, no skyscrapers, and no cars, it was the very first permanent site of the Chicago Public Library. The incentive to build a public library started in 1871 when the Great Chicago Fire offered Chicago the opportunity to rise again as a city with cultural inheritance. Following the Queen of England's donation of over 8,000 books as a gesture of friendship and compassion, Chicago's leaders established the Chicago Public Library Organization and the city's first public reading room opened in a water tank turned building. In 1890, the library board secured Dearborn Park as the future site for a permanent library. Since the state legislation also granted the land to Grand Army of the Republic, an American Civil War veteran organization, it was agreed that the completed building would serve the purposes of both the Chicago Public Library and the GAR Memorial Hall. While both parties agreed to the new classical blueprint designed by Shapley, Rutan, and Coolidge, they argued vehemently over whether Roman or Greek style should be adopted. GAR valued peace and inclusiveness of ancient Greece, while the library board appreciated practical applications of Roman architecture. The debate lasted for months until finally Coolidge proposed, why not just adopt two styles in a building? Following this suggestion, the Randolph Street entrance shows pairs of doored columns with olive branches carved on the top of a massive porch. A central curving staircase of Tennessee's marbles and cast browns was gently included for veterans ascending to the GAR rotunda on the second floor. Above the rotunda is a 40-foot diameter leaded dome made completely out of stained glass and designed in a Renaissance pattern by Healy and Millet, a noted Chicago decorating firm chosen amongst 90 competitors. Around the dome are plaster carvings of swords, shields, and flag, reminding visitors of the history of the Civil War. The Washington Street entrance is Roman-inspired, with Brown's slight doors topped with a sturdy Roman arched portal. The lobby is decorated with mosaics of glass, goat leaf, and mother-of-pearl, set in the style of Italian masters that was at the time very popular in Europe. The staircase extends up to three floors and is made of white marble from Carrara, the same kind Michelangelo used for his sculptures. Supporting the second and third floors are two white marble arches, covered with glass tessera, sparkling with names that have echoed across the human history. Classical thinkers appear on one arch, more recent authors and social reformers appear on the other. Today, this combination of Greek and Roman style is simply perceived as a symbol of new classicism and has become an attraction for visitors. The Tiffany Dome in the Van Dimmelen River is another architectural highlight. Ever since Tiffany's mosaics were installed in the chapel in the 1893 World Expo, Chicagoans developed a fetish for artists' work. The dome contains over
The building was completed on Monday, October 11, 1897. During the first week of its opening, over 10,000 people visited the monument and marveled at the inspired library and the serenely beautiful GE Army Monument Hall. One week later, on October the 9th, over 3,000 Chicagoans showed up for the very first cultural event held in the library, a gala celebration. Indeed, since its opening, the building, both the library park and the GAR Hall, became a popular gathering place that people visited during weekends and holidays. It became a true people's palace, a hub of the community, a public space where knowledge and memories of the city were created and passed down. The success of the building soon caught attention from other major cities of the United States. In the same year, the Chicago's People's Palace was unveiled. New York City decided to build a New York Public Library, incorporating its existing private libraries into a bigger, public access library. Funnily, it also chose a location near the train station, adopted a new classical design, and nicknamed People's Palace. During the mid-1970s, the building became obsolete while the book count kept growing exponentially and overcrowded the library space. The inadequate space and outdated systems in the building caused heated debates over what should be done to the building. Monuments, even as great as the Library of Alexandria, ended up in the ground. Would our building fall into the same fate and get demolished and replaced by new ones? Thanks to countless petitions and campaigns, the building escaped from its doomed fate, although shortly after, in 1991, the entire library moved to a new building two blocks away, the Howard Washington Library. Renamed the Chicago Cultural Center, the building nowadays welcomes visitors who rarely know about the origin and the past life of this splendid building, but its legacy still remains in archives of newspaper and documents under the city hall, in traces of its element referred to in the new library, in a collective memory shared by old Chicagoans, and in the vast amount of cultural event it houses today. Over the span of history, libraries get burned, destroyed, and demolished, but their influences remain. Even though the collection of books moved away, the Chicago Culture Center continues to play an important role in the handling of knowledge and memory of the city.